Hi, welcome to Good Enough Painting. Today we're continuing my Heretic Astartes kill team, uh, painting up the Chaos Champion. He is equipped with a plasma pistol, so I'll try to show you how I want to do my glow effect. Let's get to it. First color up is going to be Avedon Black. We're going to paint this between all his armor joints, his hair, including the tie for the top knot. We're also going to paint the weapons in black, but I'll do that a bit later. Um, I was still deciding how I wanted to paint them as I was going. Now up for all the purple areas. I'm using Gene Stealer Purple mixed with a little bit of the black, uh, and roughly one to half mixture. I'll be using this on both the bottom half of the legs, including the boots then the dangly bits of fabric hanging from his midsection. You can leave the skulls here, uh, we're gonna paint these silver later. Real quick, forgot to mention, uh, I also painted the right shoulder panels, only the trim and the uh, right arm in its entirety, and the backpack in this purple color as well. Um, let's get back to the video. I'm purposely painting the darkest colors first and building up to the lighter stuff. I know if I mess up on the lighter paint, on the dark paint, it's going to be easier to fix than dark on light, so that's kind of a method I like to try to stick to. Now that that's all done, let's move on to the parchment color for the rest of his armor panels. And don't forget about those skulls on his backpack, you want to hit this with that color too. I'm going to be using a Shopti Bone for this. After painting the first coat, I wasn't quite sure if I liked the color, so I mixed an equal portion of uh, Administratum Grey. And I thought this matched the color I was going for a bit better. So uh, after painting on about three or so coats, I finally achieved the level of opacity I was happy with. For all the pouches, I use Gothor Brown. This clashes a bit now, uh, but after painting on the wash, I was really hoping it would come together. And while we're here, I also cracked out a little uh, Death World Forest, a green by Citadel, and painted the grenade on his belt with this. Next up, for the Flawless Host trademark, tentacles reaching up into an inappropriate spot. I'm going to be painting them on his right leg, mostly because it's the easiest leg to get to. Uh, just like in my last video, I start small and get wider towards the bottom. Unlike my last video though, I decided to start with the top of the tentacle and work my way down, making a thin line all the way down and then coming back in and widening it, widening it a portion at a time. This made the process a lot easier, and I will be continuing to do this uh, in this way for future videos. I was feeling pretty courageous at this point, and I wanted to try a bit more uh, complicated freehand. The Flawless Host symbol. This didn't quite work out. I felt it wasn't quite good enough, and decided to paint over it and try again with the slightly modified transfer. The symbol is really close to the Emperor's Children insignia, and it's just missing the top part and uh, a small chaos star at the top portion of it. I cut out those uh, transfers and put the paper side down on the sponge of my palette. For his skin tone, I wanted to blacken skin similar to the Salamander's Army skin tone. I really like this tone for Chaos Space Marines. I feel like the amount of warp energy they're exposed to would be a good explanation for this. And I think it makes them look a little bit more menacing. I mix in a little bit of black into Cadian Flesh Tone and apply this into the head. I unfortunately didn't catch this on camera, but here's the end result. Now for the chain axe. I brought out the Abaddon Black again and applied this to the weapon grips and all of the recessed areas of the weapon head. I was still deciding how to paint the plasma pistol, but if you like, you can paint this now, just uh, avoid the plasma coils. I'm now moving on to the dry brush, uh, just to hit the raised areas of the model. I use the Minish Drop and Gray for this and use it sparingly everywhere. After the dry brush, I finally got around to painting that pistol. I was having trouble trying to figure out what to paint it, and I thought maybe simple is probably the best in this case. So I painted the casing black, excluding the coils like I said earlier. For the coils though, I painted these with white scar. I wanted a green glow for the coils, so I actually brought out something new, a uh, green ink that I've been trying to find a way to use. 
I made sure not to load up my brush with too much and I gave the entire coil a nice thin layer and allow that time to dry before moving on. Now for the metallics. I'm using bulk gun metal. The equivalent is lead belcher by Citadel now, but any silver will do. Give the skulls at the end of the bits of his fabric hanging from his belt a good layer of this and any chaos star on the model. Then the coils uh, on his chest plate. I took uh, special care of the Shanax and painted all the raised features. While I was here, I also gave the grip of his axe a dry brush of gray to give the individual wraps a little bit more definition. Now for that cool color that we get at the end result for the white panels. I give each panel a good layer of flesh wash. And while you're working all over the model, don't forget about his face. I watered the wash down a little bit and made sure to avoid all the metallics and the purple areas. For the remaining areas of the model, I would suggest uh, waiting for the wash to dry. Uh, while you're waiting, you can actually pull out some sepia wash and paint the skulls on his backpack. Then once dry, uh, mix in a little bit of water into some null oil and paint the remaining parts of the model. Be sure to leave all the parts that we just washed clean of this new wash. I started basing in the same style that I did in the previous episode for the cultist. I gave the base a thin layer of sterling mud and painted the stone a minestrone gray. Uh, then before letting it dry, I uh, gave it a quick once over with some Nolo. Oh, and for the transfer. Yeah, I needed to cut into the design to allow it to conform to the curved surface. Uh, but for some reason I wasn't really feeling that either. It wasn't quite the right scale and I ended up just trashing it. No harm, no foul. Alright, so final stud. Um, we're going to be highlighting the head with uh, pure kitty and flesh tone first. We're going to come in and just uh, gently touch in on that uh, chaos emblem scar that he has on his forehead. And then mix in a little bit of black and we're just going to be painting this onto the uh, dome of his head, the top dome. Finally, with the base room painted black, this model is complete. Man, uh, what a ride. Uh, such a detailed piece. I'm really happy with the end result. I know it isn't perfect. It's definitely not going to win any competitions. But man, this is good enough. I hope you enjoyed the video and found some techniques or colors uh, to help you with your painting. This model was actually requested by a viewer, and I couldn't help but not put it out. Uh, I'm glad he did. And if you have anything else you wanted to see uh, from this army specifically, feel free to ask. I focus on playing Kill Team with most of my 40k models, and I really don't have any other models uh, except for Terminators to add to this list. And of course, uh, I can't forget the custom of requesting your likes and your subscriptions. If you like the content, please uh, consider doing that. As of this video, I finally have 50 subs, 52 to be precise, and I couldn't be more excited. Uh, thank you all. Uh, bye for now, and remember, you don't have to be perfect. Just good enough.